Put, put your hands together for that. Welcome. Before we get started, I uh, just want to announce Julie at the bar serving drinks. If you didn't know before, check in with Julie if you need anything to drink. Give it, give it up one time for Julie at the bar. Uh, there's no cocktail service in the lab, so uh, check in with Julie if you need anything to eat or drink. Uh, got a full restaurant, full bar. Keep that in mind when you're ordering. Cell phones should be silent. Uh, don't use a cell phone during the show, please. Uh, and uh, no talking during the show unless uh, they ask you something, and then you can answer. Okay, with that in mind, we're going to have fun. And uh, put your hands together for this uh, opening act. We have the house fact checker, Mr. Dustin David. All right, everybody. Keep it going. Or don't. Stop by. Yeah, all right. All right, they want me to do a little time up front. Uh, they wanted me to do some political material, which I don't have. So I will just do regular jokes. Uh, so I used to drink a lot. You guys drinking tonight? Having some drinks? <laughs> two of you. You can round respond with a clap if you're drinking tonight. You have to. It's a two drink minimum. Uh, so I used to drink a lot. My move would be I would always wear a suit when I drank. Mostly because people just ask a lot less questions if you're drunk in a suit. <laughs> people are like, oh, that guy's probably supposed to be drunk. Show up in a bar, loosen my tie, and be like, my God, long day of putting this suit on to get drunk in. <laughs> Make it a double. So, uh, yeah, I drank for a while. I don't drink anymore. Uh, February, I will be seven years sober. <laughs> you can clap. It's not easy. I remember I told myself, I was like, I don't have a problem because I've never paid for alcohol with change. Which is a pretty low bar if you're keeping track. <laughs> but then I remembered after I quit drinking, I was like, oh yeah, you used to go to the Coinstar machine all the time. Which, for those of you who are not familiar, the Coinstar is a machine where you put all your change in, and then you get a receipt, so you can get paper currency and buy alcohol like a gentleman.
Checker for the show tonight in the back of the house, checking the facts. But now I would like to bring up uh, two very great people, our uh, artist in residence, Daryl Hammond, and the host of the show, Louis Sabatasso. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you for coming. We got our big table, Daryl. If you've come to the show before, we had a, one of these tables up here before, which is a small table for two people and then our political strategist and our cultural strategist when she's here and our guest, like around the small table, not good. So we got the big table. Every, does it look good from out there? No? All right. Well, yeah. I mean, you know. What do you think of it? Are you, are you happy with this table, Daryl? I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, and thank you all of you for remaining quiet during the evening's dramatic passages. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. We have a lot of, we have a lot of dramatic. Yes, we love this table. That's a lot of, a lot of dramatic passages. Um, we just to explain the show a little bit. Daryl and I are both. Daryl, of course, is an icon of political comedy. Uh, you know, Clinton, Trump, and all the SNL stuff that 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 he has obviously done. I, I am just a kind of a political nerd. Political junkie, as it were. Also a regular junkie. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> not practicing. That's was a long time ago. Um, and so we decided we wanted to do this show where we could talk about politics and, and do our thing, and we could you know have guests come up. And today we have a, by the way, we have an amazing guest tonight. Today uh, tonight, a journalist, um, a uh, an anchor, a KTLA news anchor, is going to come up. But we. So we wanted to do the show, and one of the things we wanted to do is Daryl was like, we have to give out the Puckered Pickle Award. Did he say that? that? Wasn't, I didn't say that. What? But I think it's a really good idea. Well. If, once they know what that means. Okay. Here's the Puckered Pickle. <laughs> we have a friend, a mutual friend named Daniel Heath. He said we could use his name. Okay. And Daniel said that he wanted to, he said, he. I told him, I always, I thought, a gay club, right? Why? I'm not a gay man, but if I if I were <laughs> not a gay man, you can. I think, and I think if you called it. Um, but why did he, why can you make a, a lot of money if you open up a gay club? The Abbey is like the most popular, profitable bar in uh, really in the United States of the entire America. The Abbey is like the most profitable place. So I want to call it um, uh, ca ca caboose caboose. I wanted to call it caboose. And I was telling I was telling uh, Daniel about this, and Daniel said he wanted to cut he wanted to open up a, an anal bleaching place <laughs> right next door called the Puckered Pickle, right? And next to that, he would have like a waxing place called what that was the uh, Grizzly Rose, <laughs> and then we would have Caboose next door where you could get fried chicken and tequila in the back room. And anyway, so this was the genesis of the Puckered Pickle. Yeah. And then um, Daryl said we should do a, uh, a puck we should give out the puckered pickle award mm. for the most shameless behavior of the week. Yes, shameless behavior of the week. And ironically enough, you were uh, you asked a couple of your oh, my last two Uber drivers have said Lindsey Graham. <laughs> 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 two weeks in a row, he got the puckered pickle from the Uber drivers, and you could really get the pulse, put your finger on the pulse of America by talking to your Uber drivers. One of you said, well, you said one of them was Nigerian? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, he was from Nairobi. And, uh, it's funnier in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, it was funny out there, but it's not happening <laughs> in here. Anyway, <laughs> so this is what we do. This mm. is what this is how we, we do our show. And we have a political strategist that comes up, and we kind of uh, delve into some political stuff. Um, Aaron? Aaron Lyles from Common Ally. Would you like me to bring him up? I just did, Dustin. Well, Dustin, our fact so checker. Wrong. We have to have a fact checker because we are a political show. And this intro Aaron, checker. Aaron Lyles. Oh, thank you. I'm used to that. The music. Yes. That's we nice. We love the music. Did you get the music? Yeah, did we get the music when we came up? I didn't hear it. Can you do the music I double? I got the music. Can you double it? Oh, there it is. It sounds very official. Yeah, it feels good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So it sounds like we're on secession. 
interesting, speaking of secession, interesting, um, Prince Andrew uh, had to move out of his, his house his mom's this house. week. He was living with his mother. He was 60. His mother being the queen, the house being Buckingham Palace. But he had to move out because he's being accused of being a pederast, of course. W wait, is he, is he being accused uh, of pederasty? Well, there was no formal accusation. He used to hang out him. with Jeffrey Epstein. They Who were, they were close committed buds. suicide. Anybody in this room thinks that Epstein committed suicide? Besides Dustin, <laughs> our fact checker. That was Rick. <laughs> that was Rick. <laughs> also, facts, who knows? Besides Rick in the booth. But I think, were they just basing it off that one photo? Which photo? Which With the rope next clear. to him? Like, no. yeah, that's case closed. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking about the prince. Um, oh, he admitted it in an interview. Yeah, the prince did an interview this week. And in the interview, which he was the only person who thought this interview was going to be a good idea. <laughs> the queen, everybody, his publicist, Buckingham Palace said, dude, do not do the interview. And he's like, no, I'm going <laughs> to. I can't do that again. And he goes to do the, and he does this interview, and he completely shits the bed. Which is an official political term um, mm. and interview term. Shits the bed. He shits the bed and interview. to the point where the, his, his mother, apparently, like any good mother whose 59-year-old son lives with her, like the mother is your biggest fan, right? Queen, the queen is, is, is Prince anymore. Andrew's biggest fan. He's been, he can do no wrong. And finally, she was just like, oh, you've got to move. I can't, again. Sounds like I, Paul McCartney. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> but she, and she I threw him out. <laughs> she threw him out of the of the house because he's a pederast, sixty year old man. So what do, what's the title? What do, what do you say at that point? If go to the caboose. Oh <laughs> oh, and he's also being de de royaled. What do you say? Yeah, fact check that yeah. is not a word. He's being thrown out of the royal family, which I thought would be de royaled. No. <laughs> Does anybody here know what that would be? What, what is it called when you're asked, when you're being banished from the royal family? From Buckingham Palace. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll have to come up with one. Well, no, because he's being officially, he's done so. Like, he's no longer royalty because of this. I mean, he yeah. doesn't you know? get a royal salary anymore? I, I, I No, I he's don't think he, he can't. He's not doing any more royal responsibilities, essentially. Is, I don't know what that means, what the implications of that are. That's not my land. Well, it's no, nor is it mine, but I thought it was a very interesting story. And I was talking to my friend Daniel, the, the puckered pickle Daniel, about this. And he actually – he yeah. actually Now, this is something I can I always on. point to Daryl when I say puckered pickle. That's for no reason other than I just like to point to Daryl. Um, but he was the one that said that he was deroyled. He threw the term deroyled at me, and he's an Englishman. So I was like, this must be – It's not. Deroyled must be a thing. Not a word. Not a word. Well, and uh, I think people got really upset because in the interview he said that, um, <coughs> you know, I was aware at the time there was conduct unbecoming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like, conduct unbecoming? He's a fucking pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. It's well, pretty I was trying to be polite. What the fuck do you mean you're trying to be polite? <laughs> For 30 years. You diddled children, motherfucker. Yeah. And you knew. Well, I was aware I was uh, unbecoming. This is why our artist in really residence good. does the accents yeah. and I don't. No. <laughs> this is yeah, how I get him to jump you, in. You asked what the proof was. Yeah, he, said, yeah, no. he said he was aware of it. So in the royal palace, sil <coughs> silence is consent. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere silence no. is consent. No, I was, I was referring no. to the what kicked it off. Like, how did he first get like outed for being a part of it? Was it the photo or was it something else? Yeah, wasn't it the photo? It was two of them. And I guess when Epstein got arrested, they started searching high and wide yeah. for the high and mighty. Just in case there were others involved. And he I had everything. I thought he was on the registry. Everything. Speaking of our artists and, and residents, well, I, I um, there was a, another gentleman that everybody always, when you think of Jeffrey Epstein, you think of this other person. Who's the most high ho high profile person to fuck around with Jeff Jeffrey Epstein? It would be Trump. Mr. Bill Clinton. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, same Z's. Both of those. Well, are. but it's the truth. I mean, and when he died of the suicide, mo everybody had the same thought. The Clintons, the Clintons whacked him, you know? I, I'm the only one who had that thought. 
Not everyone. Well, yeah. I had that thought, and I I still would like to hear. What do you? I mean, what do you think of that, Daryl? We think of Bill Clinton, Epstein situation. I, I think that Bill Clinton is the only person in the world um, who could say to a woman and get away with it. You know, if you'd only take your clothes off and let me see you naked. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is like he's looking at me while he does this. Otherwise, so no, <laughs> it's just, just take your clothes <laughs> off. Let me see you naked. No one wants that. <laughs> there would be no more racism. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear. Let's let freedom <laughs> reign. <laughs> so there you have it. Yeah. There you have it. That's nice. that's what would happen. Um, we are obviously in a political climate right now of severe. Severe left and severe right, right? I mean, it's severe. Which the problem is, it's like, who's? That's why this show is uh, the. Uh, we are a shelter for the politically homeless, because we feel like there's a lot of people who are sort of politically homeless. You're not with the crazy, you know, the the very far left wing of the party, and you're not alt right. So where do you find your solution? Where do you go, right? And uh, Aaron has his, his website, Common Ally, which is just about getting the vote out, period. Like, we just want you to vote. We don't care who you vote for. But it's gotten extreme. Do you know one of the major talking points on the far right and the major belief of people, uh, the, the real far right, is that Michelle, Ob Michelle Obama is trans. Uh, they, fact check. <laughs> they really, but that she is trans. That's a, that's a woman. Or, or that's a man. That's a man. They really believe that Michelle Obama is trans. <laughs> He's just actually <laughs> uh, Monday, October twentieth, twenty fourteen. Uh, that was a joke by Joan Rivers Ooh. that she made uh, well she after well. she was officiating a right same sex marriage. And yeah. the alt right picked it up. Oh, how many websites has it come up right now yeah. with this this story come up, Dustin? S six or seven. Yeah, and there and it how is. How many but how many websites come up that say that she's not? Honestly, not many. There you go. But these are not reputable but that's what websites. Happens. And this, this is what we, we talk about. Like, that's all it takes. Like, you put it this. It doesn't have to be true. Yeah, it does not have to be true. You just have to put it out it there. To we be are widely circulated. Influencer nation. Like you just have to talk about it. Yes. As Queen Victoria once said, from the very same Buckingham Palace, <laughs> it doesn't have to be true. You just have to tell the story. Yeah. Well. And you don't. Well, you don't even have to tell well anymore. You just have to keep telling it. I think the oh, repetition yeah. is and really loud. Like and be mad. Makes be a it feel mad. truthful. Yeah, I mean, come on. Is this the first time anybody in here has heard that Michelle Obama's trans? I've never thing? heard that. Yeah. <laughs> I no, have never people heard heard that. People have heard that. You knew about the Joan Rivers part. We did the Joan Rivers joke that I yeah. just wrote, spun out from. Yeah. They were like, what? And it's like, no, it was a bit. Yeah. Well, it's been sort of taken, adopted as a talking point. Um, sure, but in certain circles. I think the far right has other things that they're concerned with that probably come up more often. But what about the idea that um, this whole uh, impeachment thing is really about uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's health is not good and may she may pass. This is macabre, but... You mean that's why they're pushing it forward? And they want to push forward that so th they can hang an impeachment on him. But so, I he mean can't, he he really so he can't put judge number three. Sure, but I mean, I mean, if we're talking crazy shit, let's talk crazy shit. Yeah, and maybe that's not so crazy. I don't, I don't think it's that crazy, but at the same time, that doesn't really. I don't. If you don't lose your powers after that. I mean, you stay unless he is removed. That's different. But if he is impeached and remains in office, he can do everything he would do. Yeah, that like was the question that we had last week: was if he does get impeached before, even if he's not convicted in the Senate, does he lose his powers of? You know, putting in a, a, another Supreme Court justice. No, yeah, he does not. So, oh, it's our it's Republican not. friend <laughs> from Michiato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, Lou, you were talking about the far right making wacky points. Has yes, the sir. far left uh, hung their hat on any point that you think might not be the most important talking point right now? Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure. I think the, I think, I think the priorities are weird, right? Like the like the far the far left's priorities, and 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 the priorities on the far right. 
they seem to be a little out of whack. We were talking about this. And what are some, like... Climate change being number one, I mean, if you're saying far left, but I think that's also, that is one of the topics that, at least for young people, because that's I, what I deal with a lot, um, actually agree on that on both sides. So young conservatives and young progressives, actually, that's what they rally around, is climate. That's an issue that they can actually... I mean, I, 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 we, I, I'm all about climate. We, we, I mean, come on, no one's going to disagree that climate change is a topic with that is important. I think we might have people that do. You know, um, climate change, health care... Right. I want to I wanna uh, ask uh, um, somebody about this. I get these texts from Republicans, and then I send them to Aaron, and then he <laughs> tells me if they're worth bringing up. <laughs> <laughs> so in 10 days after the Thanksgiving holiday, um, in the shadows, if you want to call them this, so in 10 days after the Thanksgiving holiday, when everyone has forgotten about the lackluster three-card Monty impeachment hearings, the House will take a vote to impeach. Out of 435, they need 216 because Elijah Cummings died and Katie Hill resigned after ex-husband published nude photos, which they will get. So then it goes to the GOP Majority Senate where it would need to pass in order to remove him from office, in which case Pence becomes president. If he's unavailable, the next in line <laughs> would be the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's... That's the thing is Come this on, is all man. a conspiracy to get Nancy Pelosi to be president. Yeah, you know, we need a serious Republican help or something. Yeah, let's let's pull up our serious. Let's let's, uh, get, a real, let's get a real Republican. Justin, can we bring up our, our guest? Love to. Uh, your guest this Sorry. evening is KTLA news anchor and reporter Glenn Walker. Give a round of applause for everybody. <laughs> with the serious Republican. Yeah. Yeah. He's, not, he's not a Republican. By, the, by the way, I, uh, back to Prince Andrew. Yes. I, I know it's probably maybe not an official thing that he got expelled from Buckingham Palace, but I think the New York Post headline probably says it best. Out on his ascot. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Out on his <laughs> ascot. <laughs> yeah. we last week we had, shift, we had shift show. <laughs> the Post headlines are better than anything. They are amazing. When Tom Holmes married uh, uh, Katie, uh, Tom Cruise married Katie Holmes, the headline was tying the nut. Yeah. Or when Bush was walking through the Rose Garden with the Chinese <laughs> premier, and he's like got his arm around him, and, and, and the headline was, walk this way, W-O-K. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. We've Walk this way. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that now? That would be the that would be like two weeks in the you couldn't in the news. You couldn't really do that now. So, um, what? W uh, Speaking of what's news, what's going on in the news right now? Impeachment. What's going on with the news? I heard Ruth Bader Ginsburg is actually in the hospital today. <laughs> was again. she? You, you yeah. Again. Do you buy into, into conspiracy theories like that occasionally? Do I, mean, I buy into conspiracy because theories? Because when someone really smart that you know is smart says stuff like that, you know? Well, it depends on what the, it depends on what it is, you know? The theory is they would like for her uh, to impeach Trump before she passes. So that he can't put in... So that he can't put in... Put in number three. <laughs> but he can. Well, it's always... Uh, maybe that's... Well, if, if they could drive him out of Washington, yeah, if, I mean... They may want to force try to force him to resign. It's not going to happen. What to resign? Do you yeah. What happens if he's? It, it'll never. Well, it'll never happen that the Senate will actually try to get him out. Like that's just not happening. Not close. But say it does. Would he go? He actually said yesterday, "You want a trial in the Senate? Bring it on." Because then, of course. Because then he gets his own lawyer. He brings in his own witnesses. Yeah. And you know, there's another conspiracy theory out there that he um, he wants this because he'll declassify all of this information and it'll expose it all in a Senate during a trial. Except that if he does a Senate trial, Mulvaney and Pompeo and <coughs> Bolton would all be testifying as well. And these okay. are not people that Trump wants to testify. And so why is that? I don't know. He won't let them testify to clear his name in the, in the, in the House hearing, so obviously there's well, there's a thing called executive like privilege, and he's not going to go out of his way to help the Democrats in the House. But if he's so innocent, and there's such a, it's one one person, Pompeo could have come up and said that's not true. There was no quid pro quo; it was never said, and it's over. But that didn't happen. 
And that's he's, the part I don't understand. He's, he's not. He's going to make it as hard. It, anybody would do the same thing. They're going to make it as hard. It's just like, you know, if you get charged with a crime, you know, you're not going to help. You're not going to help the prosecutors. It's the same type of thing. And this whole impeachment inquiry thing, uh, it's kind of it's a little one sided, unfair to begin with. How, yeah. how is that? Uh, fact check. I, don't they have both? That's, an, that's an opinion. I don't think that uh, that that warrants a uh, whatever you I just was whatever you deem for. I, Republicans and Democrats are allowed in the hearing. That's not what I said. <coughs> the Republicans, you well, got to understand the way Schiff set this thing up. Everybody that uh, the Republicans in the House wanted to come in and testify, Schiff said no. That's, that's not that's true. Not Devin I Nunes picked two of the people that testified. I mean, that uh, what, that's just not true because they were allowed to bring yeah. anybody in. No, they, they can't bring anybody in. Schiff still has the final call. Maybe he did allow those people in, but he has final call on who they could bring in to testify. That's a fact. Go look it up. It's deeper than where you're looking. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you what I heard. Okay. Well, that was a comment. That's checked. a comment when uh, you know uh, Daryl was talking about talking points. That was a common talking point. Like it's a rigged game, and you know they're controlling yeah, everybody this, that they could bring up. And well, it you know, not the case. All right, you know what? We were talking about this beforehand. The way the news cycle works. For instance, the mm. day that Sondland. Testified. By the way, if you just came in late, this is Glenn Walker, KTLA news anchor. Hey. We're talking news from him. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I don't know where they get the staunch Republican thing from. That's not exactly true. <laughs> He's no labels. I hate all politicians. I was trying no to suggest I love politics, but I hate all no, politicians. No, Louie and I are, are kind of like knuckleheads, um, you know, and you're a legit guy. So you're I'm legit. Gonna, we just like yeah. to talk about the legitimacy. Okay. He was flattered here. All right, so this is watch the – yeah, flatter gets you nowhere. Let's talk about the whole th way this whole thing was set up, and I think I, we talked just about this earlier. The whole Sondland testimony was a prime example, probably the best example of all. So every day when they had these hearings, inquiry, whatever you want to call it, Schiff would give his opening statement. Then Devin Nunez would give his opening statement. Mm -hmm. And then whoever was testifying that day would give their opening statements. And then Schiff and the attorney with him would ask questions. This is exactly what happened with Sondland. Now remember in Sondland's opening statement, he said, was there quid pro quo? And he said, yes. I'm watching this. I'm going, holy cow. And so Schiff and his, and his the lawyer with him, they ask questions. And then they take a break because they have to go take a vote. And he runs outside, does a news conference. That is what they do, though. They have to go. It's well, not even true. No, I understand. Before I understand. he no, went I'm out, just, Nunez. I'm just telling, I'm just telling you the way this played out in this particular day yeah. with Sondland. So, of course, the media runs with the headline, Sondland says there's quid pro quo. So then they come back, and as the day goes on, and the Sondland is cross-examined by, you know, the Republicans. Well, it turns out in his conversation with President Trump, President Trump said, "No, you know, no quid pro quo. I just want them to do the right thing." Well, that's not exactly the same thing, and it turned. And Sondland presumed that's what the president meant, like a lot of the other witnesses that testified. They were assuming things, they had their opinion of, about things, but there was no factual evidence See, that that's, that's what was said. That's actually but, not but what hold happened. Hold on a second. Then Glenn, the media that's ran, not what happened. Then the media ran yeah. with it. Dude, I watch this crap every freaking day. Listen to me. This I'm in the is, media. This, this is why this didn't happen, because I watched it go down. All right. It can was, I finish, three, it can was I finish, three weeks can before. Can I finish my point? Go ahead. Okay. So I think it was USA Today, the headline, the Ambassador Sondland says, you know, there was quid pro quo. The testimony later refuted that. You know it. And then Actually, I was I watching one of the other local that, newscasts. Right. That, uh, I'm not going to say which station it wasn't mine. But they ran a story on there, 11 o'clock news. And it was basically voiceover into a, a, a soundbite and basically the same, same thing. He said, you know, quid pro quo. They took his opening statement. They didn't take his testimony. They just took his opening statement. It's completely different from his opening statement. Yeah, well, do back on the planet Earth. Um, what happened uh, was sure. that, what happened was, uh, first of all, Nunez did get to talk before, before after Sondland and, they and before they the other break. And, and they ended up changing the format. And they ended up changing the format. I said Nunez did his opening statement. Mm -hmm. And then the 
Sondland did his opening statement, and then they took a break. Yeah. And well, Ellie knows when this Sondland because was referring to Trump assist, uh, saying quid pro quo, it was bef way before that. S Trump said that three weeks after it was all over the media about quid pro quo. So he's like, I got to get it out there that there was no quid pro quo. This is perfect. Sondland's calling me. First thing out of his mouth, no quid quo pro quo. No quid pro quo. <laughs> Just he's like just he's tell him to do the right thing. That's it. This is three weeks after quid pro quo was everywhere. Like how is that right, not wait, an wait, issue? Wait, wait, wait. Let me make let me let me be clear on this. Yeah. The conversation in which he said I don't want quid pro quo occurred after the whistleblower came out. Three weeks later. Yeah. Okay, so it was three weeks afterwards. Yeah. Oh, and and how come the whistleblower can't testify? But what he's difference protected. is it like, Protection of anonymity. Yes. Like what he's that's the whole point of whistleblower protection. Like, only the what only is this whole thing about outing the but, whistleblower? But, like, but do you understand that like, so because he's not a true whistleblower? Somebody, How do you know? Because somebody he's protected. I'll tell you why, because when uh what is it, Vidman, the guy that came in in his uniform? Vindictive What's Vindman? wrong with yeah, him coming in in his uniform? Yeah, yeah, fuck that guy coming <laughs> in in his uniform serving his country. Well he's interesting because he doesn't wear it to work every day at the White House. Why would he? Exactly. Uh, so right, why would we, he wear it to the hearing? Well, we keep oh talking. My God. We keep talking about oh, optics. Process and we optics. We talk about optics, and optics and like process, and we're not talking about why we're even in that room and what we're actually talking about. Like, and the fact that national security is in jeopardy if these things play out and they prove true, that's that's. How is our national security in jeopardy? Really. So first of all, by just denying the fact that every single Ru wait, wait, Russia invading what? By the way, they uh, they did that during the last administration. <laughs> by the way, anybody who wants to, yeah, some, we to, have to a say something, there's a uh, Dustin David in the back. Our fact checker Someone has a like mic. A he can say something. At the bar. <laughs> there was a meow. If, if Dustin <laughs> sees it, yeah. uh, the things that's who me out at the bar. Okay. This is my point. It's like I don't I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm not right. I don't <laughs> care. But this but this is this is what I do know. Just talk about the facts. N he won't acknowledge and Glenn, you won't acknowledge either the fact that how is that a defense when it was three weeks later? Huh? He brought up the quid pro quo thing three weeks after it was all over the media. Everybody's talking quid pro quo. Then he says to Sondland, no quid pro quo. Oh, that's it. He said Wait, it. But are, we still, are no. we still like operating under the fact that someone has to actually say those words and like it has to be. Well, I thought it wasn't quid pro quo. It was actually bribery because the Democrats mm -hmm. had to go do a focus group to well, figure out exactly what they need. Any to good no, show needs a focus group. Point. The strategy behind why they're saying bribery is because that is in what impeachment actually is, and they know they have to start talking about that. Like, because the high crimes and misdemeanors is vague, but bribery is clearly spelled out. So it, they do want to start talking about that if that's what they think it is. And in this case, that's what it would be. Like, why they brought it up now is advantageous. Like, that, yes, that's, I get what you're saying. Sure, point. However, I don't think it's why you are saying it. Look, bottom line is this, the Democrats have backed themselves into a corner because they're trying to mollify their base. They've got them ginned up. They started talking about impeachment the day after this guy elect got guy elected president. And they've been ginning it up. Well, that is true. But, but, yeah. but and, it, and, and, and you know what? Whatever they did, it didn't work because the, the people who were undecided, I saw a poll, 67% of them think this whole thing's a waste of time. This guy's going to get reelected in a landslide. Like it or oh. not, it's going to happen. Point of I'm calling it right now. Landslide. Remember, remember Point. what I said. Not refuting Next this. November, yeah. he's going to re get reelected, and it's going to be a landslide, and it's going to be really no. good. He may not no. win. He's not going to win California. I'm not refuting But he's going to get reelected in a landslide. And Jesus everywhere where he can gerrymander his way onto the. Excuse me? Ticket. You don't think gerrymandering is happening? You don't think well, redistricting plays a role? you don't think Democrats do the same role? thing? You don't what? think that there the is Democrats something... Democrats don't do anything the wrong. The House has a bill <laughs> yes. that's been waiting there for hundreds of days. What is there? What has Eric on... Holder been running around the country Wait, trying hold to do? on. There's, th there are, there's a bill in place, several, three of them, I believe, that are trying to protect the elections from what the Russians did that has been established as fact by every single agency in the country but for so, some, you don't believe that, right? No. It's a hoax. So you don't think And not every agency. Uh, listen, he didn't collude with the Russians. That, that was the biggest bunch of crap. No, 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 no. But the Russians did interfere in our election. Not, yes. Not to the point where it made a difference. Even. Uh, oh. Fact check. Based on what? 
based on the testimony of mm, looking for a name. She testified. Fiona Hill. That's the one. Oh, she's yeah. a never Trumper. Oh yes, the career security. bureaucrat. That 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 saw that saw. She oh, said under the, oath. She's the one that saw the steel dossier while she was working at the Brookings Institute. I wonder. Now, how did she get her hands on that? All where that time before did the, you get really? this information? Where did, she testified to it. She actually said, "I saw the steel re- dossier when I was working at the Brookings Institute." I, I wonder that, like former national security. How did she get her to tr- why how, did she, how did that, how did that fall into that? her hands? She was the former national security council official. Well, why wouldn't she have access to that? Yeah, well, th- that's that's the whole point. How did that thing get into being in the first place? Yes, let's talk about mm. that because that's you let's know it doesn't matter where question. anything led. It's <laughs> like let, the importance is how did it originate, right? That but this is my well. Point. That's what's all going to come out uh, between 9th. now and next November. Oh, nothing's coming. I mean, they showed uh, what's really? going to come out. It was like some lower level some attorneys, the, the doctors, some lower shit. level like attorneys. Nobody okay. gives a shit. Yeah, and let's get back to people like Fiona Hill. I think mm. one thing that the impeachment inquiry has showed us is that you have all these bureaucrats. We didn't vote for any of these people. I mean, this guy Vidman's talking about, you know, uh, foreign policy as if it's up to him, not up to the president. The president of the United States, no matter who it is, decides what the foreign policy is. These people are supposed to carry out what he wants to do. But he's, yeah. excuse me, that's the truth. You didn't vote for people. It, it's got nothing to do with being a king. Someone you said elected he's not him a president. King. He's not he a king. Sets he sets the foreign that. policy. Get this the man president the of the United States dictates foreign policy, which is to be carried Justin out the cordless mic. Yeah. by our diplomats. Okay, listen, well, here's the on, thing. Hold on. Well, who, who, who gets paid? Question? I want to hear. Yeah. How long have we been paying him? The federal government, how long have we been paying him each and every day to do his job? Paying Vidman? Yeah. What, the, what difference does that make? Because he is part of our law. These are – we have 50 states. We have – What's that got to do with some dude working in the White House? Some dude working – I, I think what he's saying the is everybody has a right to a say their opinion, and he's another dude that said his opinion. Okay, but, but the bottom line is at the end of the day, he can give his opinion, but it's – Ultimately, whatever the foreign policy is, is still decided by the president, not by career people who work in the government who you did when not did vote sh- for. When did this shift happen? Because I feel like I, I, I feel like Trump was never a Republican, first of all. And I feel like Trump has taken the party by hostage, and he speaks to a lot of people, and that's, that's fine. That's part of the base. But when did the Republican Party look at – public servants as enemies like i i question whether if in another administration would you still feel Deep this way state. well probably be, probably like because the 10 wealthiest Deep 10 state. of the wealthiest counties in the country are all the suburbs of dc our our federal bureaucracy has gotten so big and fat and rich off your tax dollars Wait, and, and so now is and that they want to keep that different, gr- right? Now? They want to listen. He was elected to be a disruptor, to go to Washington, but to he change did none things. of those things to change what you just mentioned. He's trying, but the the resistance. He, you Who's know, the resistance. He has the, the resistance. Senate. He has 170 federal judges. Like he's got it all. Like what are you? What are they waiting I'm talk- for? The same argument that was given to he's trying. He's Obama. trying to pass that new trade deal with Canada and Mexico, and the House and Nancy Pelosi just. She won't put it up for a vote. Mitch Prime example, Mitch right McConnell there. never does that, right? I didn't. That's not, that's <laughs> yeah, not I'm just my, saying. Look, I'm, honestly, I'm taking the. I'm take, We're talking about. We're talking about his agenda. We're not, we're not talking about anybody. You know. Yeah, you're right. McConnell did the same damn thing when Obama was president. They're fighting it out. They're still doing it. You're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they? Oh, just yeah. a quick Listen, uh, you know, fact uh, check about the United States Mexico Canada agreement. Yeah. It says no deal on NAFTA successor. Democrats point to progress. Yeah, it's just because they have they need to vote on it so they could send it to the president. And they haven't done that. I agree with that. They they have not done that, and I don't know that's probably should have been done. Like, what does that have to do with impeachment? Like, why does that have to not happen just so they can go through impeachment? Because they don't want to. They don't want to give them a victory. Because it looks like a victory for him, they don't want to give him a victory. I mean, it's that that could that that. <laughs> could, 
This is my <laughs> oldest yeah. brother, Kurt, who just sat down. Oh, okay. He's from Orange County. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. All right. Very, well, very. Before we kill each other, <laughs> let's lighten the mood a little bit and talk about farting. Oh. Because I, I, en I enjoy that topic. And it's Did you guys see Fartgate? Yeah, Anybody know about it's Fartgate? It's politically relevant. Um, you talking about Swalwell? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that I guy, thought it was That Matthews. guy's dumb as a rock. <laughs> what happened with that? He was being interviewed by Chris Matthews, and uh, there was a moment where he <laughs> stopped talking and did one of these, and a loud wait, fart wait, noise wait, wait, what did he do? <laughs> he, he stopped talking kind of <laughs> like that. Chris wait. Matthews did? Did, did no. we? <laughs> Eric Swalwell. Well, we, no, still don't, we still don't know if it, was, oh, if it was Matthews or him, but they're claiming that, oh, it was a glass sliding across the table. <laughs> which, which was the one that Wh raised But there was no uh, class wait. that moved. Which okay. one raised his left buttock? We need to have, like, he has a, a Zabruder film, the frames of the Zabruder film, to see Matthews what happened. <laughs> Matthews was off screen when it happened. But it did yeah. sound like there was a chair ricochet. I think there was a second shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he there was, was a second shooter. <coughs> Swallow was standing. On the grassy knoll. Yeah. Gassy so knoll. While, while my impression of him lifting his shoulders in, involved my butt moving too, that really wasn't what happened. He was standing. So there was a, a slight little one of these. So he needs to work on that. So yeah, there was we just don't know. There was. There was a you slight little... I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I will say, Vice did a really interesting investigative story on it. Um, they went down and they did mug moves and all sorts of. So things. they did like a Zapruder, a whole yeah, thing. They did a whole thing. Wow. But what was Chris Matthews' response? Uh, I don't remember his response. I used to. Do you know him at all? I used to like. Yeah. What? <laughs> nice. I heard. I heard. I heard Matthews has a reputation about of doing that. Lighting well, matches? Like no, letting it rip. Well, <laughs> listen, it's a <laughs> human being. That's a deep state like conspiracy. Oh, that's God. a deep state conspiracy. <laughs> we have found the level of the room. <laughs> 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 we know what we want to do from henceforward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do y'all know who Chris Matthews is? <laughs> the guy that talks like this? <laughs> <laughs> MSNBC. <laughs> <laughs> that guy? <laughs> The walls are closing in. <laughs> I used to I used to go over to his house like when I when I used to play him and he hmm. would like tie, try jokes out on me and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff that he would hope you would take. No, he'd be like reading the, like one time he was reading the paper. <clears throat> it seemed like everything in paper was pissing him off. And at one point <clears throat> he says to me, "Daryl, Tom Cruise is gonna get braces." <laughs> I'm like, "What?" He goes, "Tom Cruise is gonna get braces." <laughs> I'm like. He goes, he goes, maybe something about him will be straight now. I go, Chris. <laughs> oh, wow. No, I told him off. I said, Chris, that is so wrong. <laughs> he goes, Daryl, I'm kidding. Tom Cruise is not gay. When I fucked him, he cried the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke? That was the joke was he said? Joke. That's amazing. amazing. I fucked him, he cried the whole time. Hey, <laughs> get it? <laughs> <laughs> Made you wow. laugh. And a couple of people in row four. Yeah, no, that's good uh -huh. work right there. Left back there. Well, that. that that's uh, that's amazing too. I want to hear more about the time you went to Chris Matthews' house. Okay. Where was Chris Matthews? Just a quick fact check here. I yeah. don't think Chris Matthews ever had sex with Tom Cruise. I believe that is false. No, he didn't. Y maybe he was just joshing. Yeah, it's part yeah. of his yeah. bit. For just kidding around. Comedic We're not purposes. trying to s say we don't. Well, you know what? Just want to clear. In the age we live in now, you have, have to Matthews. prove it. You have to prove, it. you have to prove it's not true. Yeah, yeah. that's the way it works now. And it can't be hearsay, like Jim Jordan says. Yeah. Right? Uh, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, tell me about this Jim one, Jordan. This one's talking to that Jordan. one, this one's talking to that one, this one, that one, that one. That one. I mean, I don't know who I'm talking to. That's, uh, <laughs> excuse me, that's four conversations between six people. That's what? Is that what he said? four conversations between six people. You know what a quid pro quo is? <laughs> this for that. This for that. <laughs> Seems like there's a whole lot of this, but not a lot of that. <laughs> and he takes this one talking to that one, that one talking to this one. I don't I can't keep track of it. This is unbelievable. Huh? Do you guys know who Jim Jordan is? Huh? Did anybody watch the impeachment hearings here? Oh. One, yeah. I know Kurt did. Yeah, I yeah, did because he's. You guys retired? Think they do. Are they retired? You guys retired? Yeah, this is my oldest brother. He's retired, and that's my dad. He's very retired. <laughs> Not like very old, but he's been retired for a couple of decades. And Kevin's never worked, so the three of them, <laughs> <laughs> the three of them are. 
I'm kidding. He was in the middle. He was Louis a wounded. Louis makes so much more sense. Hey. Now. Wounded. He's a wounded veteran. Oh, wow. Kevin's dead. a wounded veteran. Kevin, take, say hello. I see we have Thank some you other for wounded your vets in here. Thank you for your service. Um, nice but yeah, you so again. you guys watched the impeachment. I mean, I watched it because you know this is, you know, this is all I have now is the show. So I have to, I have to keep abreast of this <laughs> stuff. Um, and so I watched everything, and you know, I know Daryl watches a lot, some of it, some and, of it. and I know Aaron keeps up with it when he can. And it's like, you know, watching it like objectively, because the truth of the matter is, I had. It's like, listen, I was, ve- I'm from. Orange County, Newport Beach. I was very Republican my whole life. I was a Bush Republican. He's privileged. Is that right? Um, he was born in privilege. Uh, well, we actually, I was born up here and moved down there. Well, Things got dark. <laughs> very true. I love the Lakers. All right, the I truth didn't comes out. Give wow. a shit about politics. <laughs> but I was a Bush. I loved Bush. And I used to talk, and I was a Bush Republican. So. We, I, I, we Dad's on then fire, we had man. this situation. <laughs> we had a situation where we had a, we had a, you know, where we had some personal experience with the guy who's now the commander in chief, and the same people I used to listen to as like these people are telling the truth were saying things about this guy that I just knew were not true. So I flipped the other way, and now I've very much gone back to the middle where I'm objectively looking at everything. I don't hate President Trump. I'm not a sycophant to President Trump. I don't think he's the fucking messiah, what a lot of people do, but I don't, I'm really objectively trying to look at this, and I'm trying to watch these hearings objectively, and I'm trying to have an objective voice just about facts that we can bring here and talk about Mm -hmm. without opinion. There's enough opinion. There's opinion shows all over the place. Well, I think we have to do a little opinion. Well, a little bit, but that's that's yeah. You know. Because, but, but but when you when you just all you can see are sound bites. I mean, who has time to sit home and take notes all day long? And you see Louis. these sound bites. You know. Well, so to but Glenn's I mean point too is they take Sondland's headline of "There is no quid," and and all of a sudden, yeah, you know, Ken Starr is saying it. Somebody comes Fox. home from work and they go, "Oh wow, yeah, yeah. he did it." Mm. Yes. But that happens both ways, and that's that's the point. It's just like I think the the problem is not with any one party; it's just the way all this stuff is being handled. And we're getting a shit show of every day. There's something, and it, no one wants to keep up with it or can. And once you do finally understand something, something else is right. Well, there. you know what's like interesting for the, ra- the ratings on the impeachments? It went down yeah. every day. Yeah, but this is like what the fuck is that? Like it's a, the actual reality of, shows we're talking the about the ratings of the impeachment instead of. Why are we going through? No, these I'm just saying people tuned out. The, you know, the people that were available yeah, to but really watch, they tuned out. They, 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 they stopped I mean, work. To your point, like people are out. They're they like and trying they, and to And they make did a, a really good job of r- raising a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, I mean that's what the defense what does, and they did a good job of it. Yeah. And why are they working? Huh? And why are they working? Because we have record employment in this country. Oh boy. That's because of Uber and Lyft. We've already talked right. about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not even close. Uh, Ride chairs. Which the politicians in this state are trying to run out of town. Mm. Postmates. Oh, fact check from before. Just trying to keep up with you guys. Uh, November 22nd, impeachment TV ratings see slight uptick. Slight uptick? Yeah. I think that means more people are watching. Not yet. Just on the one day. Just on that one day. Which... It is. Yeah. It's like the it, it's a, it is. It's a big reality television show. That's my worry, right? So my focus is to get young people involved in civics and in, in understanding their government and understanding issues around them. So because issues affect our lives outside of a political cycle, and we've just gone so far out of that. Like we aren't focused on the actual substance of anything anymore. That's my concern. Yeah, but if someone sits you down right now and goes, "Listen, I'm going to put a bullet in this guy's fucking head right now." Unless you swear behind a sh- shadow of a doubt, and a moral certainty, who's the guy? That's Louis. gonna make a big difference. Mm. Yeah, that could be. It could, uh, no, it could be me. It could be me. Okay, yeah. no, right. That's, that's. I'm gonna. Sh- yeah, we're gonna shoot this guy. We're gonna shoot him it, if. It, unless you can swear beyond a shadow of a doubt and for moral certainty that he didn't do it. Yeah. Can you? Mm. That's well, the whole point. I thought so. <laughs> huh? So I mean, that's kind of the point, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's what they're. It's. It's very effective. And now we're going to the Senate, and we're going to ha- get to now we're going to get to see Mitch McConnell, which is uh, very entertaining. Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and and uh, and Chuck Schumer. 
Well, the, um, the, which is you, amazing because if, just, if just the back and forth between Chuck Schumer if, if and Lindsey. If first. the vote passes, it's, it's going to yeah. pass, though, in the House, and you've got 31 Democrats from districts that swing Trump districts won that yeah. are a little concerned about this. I'm yeah. just, I'm really excited. I want to see Mitch McConnell and, and I want to see Mitch and Chuck do a back and forth. <laughs> Wait, Chuck will be in the Senate trial, won't he? Uh, Chuck, Sh Chuck Schumer will. Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer will be in the Senate trial. Is that right, Glenn? Well, they'll both be there. I'm looking at it. It, Chuck it's Schumer it's is the, mi is the but it's minority senator. But it's presided over by the uh, mm -hmm. Justice of the Supreme Court. Yes, Judge Roberts. Yeah. We'll preside over it. But I think it'll be, uh, I think it's going to be amazing, the back and forth between, you know, Schumer and... and Do you like and Chuck Schumer? I like, I like listening to him. <laughs> Mitch McConnell has a bloat. <laughs> He's got an attitude. He's got a droop. Who would want to converse with droopy dog? <laughs> <laughs> you know what Chuck Schumer used no, to do? No one in the audience is laughing but us, Louie. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's yeah, great. great. And what, what would, I want to hear would, McConnell. Though. What would Mitch yeah. McConnell say to that? I'll tell you what I told everyone else. <laughs> Go pull that kite. <laughs> Billy Goat. <laughs> Funny at table three. The Louis. bottom line. <laughs> The bottom line is this: we just keep uh, getting more of those judges in there, and yeah. Chuck can't do a damn mm. thing about it. We talk about that every week. Every, I want to have a count every week. Like we got, we talk about this all these shows. Like every, how many judges this week did Trump quietly appoint? I think he had three last week. He had three last week. So it's how many like does how many does he have now? One hundred and seventy. So which is fine. Depends like I'm all about court. that's that's your right to do that, right? Yeah. But we are passing people that the Bar Association is saying unqualified, who've never tried a case, and now these are lifelong appointees. Like, where is that? Oh, we need a fact checker. check we'll on pull that. that up. That what am I looking at? young lady at the bar speak. Can we do that? Dustin, we need the mic we, over here. These we talk about people want to talk. My mic. Pick one. There was one last week. Like, literally, there's... The guy last week who was appointed, who, who so didn't... Who he basically but are said you okay I, with that? Like... An unqualified judge. Well, yeah. I, I couldn't tell you the guy's name, but there was definitely a guy confirmed. Yeah. Um, who was the bar association said this guy is completely unqualified. Yeah, he wasn't the first either. There's several. <laughs> the guy, remember the guy? They get the, he did the interview right after he got confirmed. He's like, what do you say? <laughs> Which one are we talking? The guy who said, yeah, I, oh, I don't know, well, habeas corpus or what? Uh, <laughs> what do you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was. Um, do you remember this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes, yeah, yeah it, tor 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 tort reform. Like, tort reform. I don't know. <laughs> well, how do you feel about tort reform? I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that could also, by the way, be they politics. They just called yeah. me. Huh? They called me. They said, come <laughs> over, talk <laughs> to the president. <laughs> I was going to meet him, and now I'm a judge. I'm a federal judge now. <laughs> Forever. Forever. <laughs> Until I die. That's I mean, that's I'm. a little bit extreme, obviously, but that's kind of the, you know, that's that's the kind of the feel. It is alarming. Totally. But right, I mean, like that. that was a little egregious. The guy's going, he's trying to ask him, like, tort reform. He's like, uh, tort reform? <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know. Hey, these guys are going to make some very good Yes. Uh-oh. Barely. Uh, D Dustin's mm -hmm. fact Dustin, I need the I need the He's mic fact for, 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 for my dad. Got to run this. Yeah, you do. This <laughs> is a podcast. This is being recorded. It's live stream. We need you mic'd. Oh, okay. It's not for you. Yeah. I'm not gonna give my name. There you go. No. <laughs> All right. You don't have to. Louis Sabatasso's <laughs> father <laughs> speak. Will not give his name. Will not give his name. My father. Go ahead. You guys all remember this. Kennedy gets elected president. One of the things he promised to do. How old do you think I am? Yeah. What? Huh? To one of them, our, our Italian friend, that uh, he put, was going to kick his brother out of everything because he was after the took a North Germany. Wait, he had promised this to an Italian friend? What is happening yes, he right did. now? He said this is for our Italian friends. This goes to the conspiracy theory of the, uh, the Chicago. Frank oh, Sinatra helped get him elected. Yeah, it yeah. Says, no. <laughs> he said. <laughs> <laughs> the, the First, the you got to protect yourself, Glenn. He's feisty right now. Yeah, I grew does up anyone, with this, Glenn. Does every young person here know who the Kennedys are? I hope so. Okay, all right. Please. John F. Kennedy. All right. all right, let me give a goddamn example. Oh. Oh. Right. Well, oh I grew hey. up with this, guys. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Go ahead, Dad. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. All right, one of the things that Kennedy needed was, a, was some of the vote from Illinois. And... Uh, 
and one of the mafiosa helped him. But he said to him, he said, look, why should I help you? What the fuck are you going to do for me? He says, and by the way, your brother's up our ass all over the place. Kennedy said, listen, I get elected president. You help me out. My brother will be out of government. He's going to go in private practice. That's what he said. He got elected a couple of days later. Bobby Kennedy was justice of the uh, the attorney, attorney general. general. Attorney the general. attorney general. The yeah. press said, how the hell could you do that? This guy's never tried a case. And Kennedy said, well, he's got to get some experience somewhere. <laughs> Which is great. Well, how do you argue great. with that? That's great. Yeah. How do you argue with that? Yeah. yeah. Exactly On the, the job. That's exactly what the press says. On the job yeah. training. Well, so we're all right. So let me just, just let me take the temperature as the here as the top cop. So we're all land. just cool with that. They I'm not. See, you're you're assuming that we're going to take a side politically on that. This is not like no. That shouldn't have happened <coughs> then. This shouldn't happen now. We should have people who are qualified in their role, and they're not. And this is alarming because of the rate that they're appointing judges right now. This so goes so back to nepotism, problem. which is at the root of, uh, ironically, at the root of, um, ironically, because the Trump's talking about ne nepotism is just funny. I mean, everybody can agree that <laughs> Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> tweeting about nepotism is just funny. But the root of this is the Bidens and nepotism. They didn't make their money in politics. You know? Or use politics uh, to make uh, their money. Uh, uh, the Trumps. Trumps. The Trumps. They made their money before he ran for president. <laughs> Excuse me? Mm hmm? It's the Butch Republic you have to protect. I'm sorry he was a billionaire when he got elected. I mean, well, I, uh, I don't think it's that. Really yeah, I don't think that's the And issue. he's not taking a salary. Oh, I oh, know. <laughs> this is the greatest argument. My, 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 my mother made this argument to me one time. She goes, I said, um, she said, Louie, he was in my living room, and I remember him, and he's a good guy, and he's not even taking a salary. And I was like, oh, okay, so that's like, what, three, four hundred thousand dollars a month? Or, 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 or four fifty uh, a year. Four fifty a year, that's great. How much money is going into Trump's pocket every time he goes to golf at a Trump National Golf Course with the Secret Service there and all the people that have to stay in the rooms? I mean, come on. It's like, just don't be hypocritical. Don't say I'm not taking a salary when the presidency has given you millions and millions of dollars through your own properties. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, so just admit it. Don't. It, nobody cares, but don't be that hypocritical about it. I hate the hypocrisy. To be fair. Well, that hypocrisy is not your fault. We need a microphone over here. My, my brother Kurt's going to. If anybody wants to say <laughs> anything, you can come to I the back of the room. I feel like everyone's just in your living room so right now. So I can now. continue to fact check you. The you, let him have your, you can have my mic. To be fair, Trump has kept the promise of not taking a salary. I mean, I think he's a great guy. Do you want guy, him to go stay at a motel late? What yeah, do you mean? I mean, we're but, uh, but you understand what I'm saying, saying Glenn. You understand oh, what sir. I'm saying. Oh, I just looked sir. it up. Yeah. You know, I didn't think it was you know, true. It damn, true. he owns that place in Palm Beach. <laughs> so, and damn, so he owns Louis, that place in New Jersey. I mean, it's just Louis, absurd. Where, what do members of Congress make a year? How much money do they make? 170. It's 180. 175 thousand dollars a year. And they're all millionaires. How's that happen? Yes. Ninety-nine percent of them are millionaires. Thank you. How's that happen? Guys, wondering. How's that happen? We have this. We have 50 states. How did they make all that money? Yeah. How did they make all that money? Part of it through insider trade. Which we'll all get thrown in jail for. I mean, here's a, but it's know, legal the for them. President showed up, and he made his money before he got into politics. All those people that are s trying to set policy for us all the time, when they got there, they had they didn't have change yeah. for a quarter. So now when do we start working Where on those problems? Where do you think all problems? that money came from? When that's do we a, get to work question. on that? They're all very shrewd businessmen. They don't even know anything about business. They're shrewd, but they don't know anything about business. That's a f listen. That's, that's I, I, I agree with you, and I am not. I am not an, an, a polo I'm not an apologist for people who've been in government forever. I never have. Been. I am if they're if they're public servants who have actually done their job and who are actually trying to bolster democracy. I'm not for lifelong people who are are making Bolster millions democracy. Of millions. Yeah. How, would, how are they bolstering are, democracy? Well, they're. Pres I mean, hopefully they're practicing it in favor of their constituents. That's doing their job. That's what democracy is. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how. That's if you're true. lining your pockets in other industries, that's not that. Those two things aren't the same. And I think we're all agreeing that that shouldn't happen. And that has nothing to do with Democrats or Republicans. A hundred percent. I just like, don't. I hate that. Just how is they this all a do it. So issue? Don't, yeah. I just it's the it's the whole notion of to me it's the uh, you know the a perfect example and an encapsulation of that is draining the swamp. 
right? I get it, and that's an awesome thing, and to a certain extent, that's happening. But guess what the swampiest place in Washington has become? Trump International Hotel. So it's like, th that's... Has that's the part so that, doesn't, that doesn't that make sense to me. Which he owned before he ran for president. Of course, but that's so my that's not my point. My point is that that's and now he's where he's going to be giving it up. That's too. where like a lot of swampy things are happening. So just it's like if we don't if we don't look at what we all everybody knows, then you're not going to be able to change it. So if we don't admit that yes, there's fucked up shit on this side, fucked up shit on this side, but this is what's happening. And it's obvious. It's like, all right, let's uh, let's uh, it's like Kennedy saying the throwing it off with a well, he needs to get experience somewhere. Like if Trump was just like, well, yeah, I, I, I wanted to. I, I asked about Biden. Well, hold on. Boner, bad mistake. Let's move on. It would have that. That's it. Can, can, can so just point. very quickly, right? So, with due respect, Illinois is not the whole United States of America. And if you look at from a data standpoint, I, I've read the story. I, I actually love Al Capone quite a bit, actually. Okay. So he was. No, no, we have, no, no, we have, we have an Al Capone. We have an Al Capone lover. Al was. No, no, no. Al was. But, but, but Capone was dead. An electoral vote said is whether you believe the Russians or whoever else have hacked into our election, our democracy. It should be about election. It's about democracy. Okay. Do I believe it or not? I don't know. But here's the thing. How they did is is through the the internet, all right? The Kardashian, all these things, right? On Instagram, there's about eight gig every half a second of data coming through Instagram. That's eight gig, that's a lot. Now, if you look at the internet, all right, and compare it about, about President Trump, with full respect, President Obama, Clinton, all these things, all right, don't go beyond Bush because the data doesn't exist, okay? Because social media, okay? Yeah, what's the because, I don't because the whole thing about this is right. Your question earlier was about why a lieutenant colonel had to walk in and wear his military clothes. Mm. Do you know why? Why? Because it's actually a best practice and it's also a rule. It is. That, that, that so is. That's very true. So you have a fact checker in the back there and he's doing his hardest to Google, to YouTube, whatever Instagram, whatever. Let's it give is. it up for okay. Dustin, That's our fact checker. Yeah, yeah, Good job, yeah. Dustin. You you're doing a great job truth. back there. So you go back home. To. And actually, do your own research, or not fight and just educate each other. Yeah, well, that's right. a word. What's your that's name, sir? Murray. Murray. Thank you, buddy. Thank, Thank you, you, Murray. That's, uh, that's what we advocate for here. Murray. <laughs> Murray. <laughs> well, uniform or no uniform, <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel <laughs> Bidman, as he likes to be addressed, and not Mr. Bidman. What? Uh, I'm. Sh why? Uh, that's Lieutenant there's nothing wrong with Colonel. that. I mean, I yeah. just. I just make it a joke. It's a freaking comedy club. Okay? <laughs> well, I know, but <laughs> the joke falls flat. But it falls flat. But that's but that's an argument. But the that bottom line make. is, he went out of the chain of command, and that's. And let me tell you something. He may end up in the brig for that. Wow. And I think actually he should. They're all gonna pay. <laughs> <laughs> Every last one of your goddamn. The, okay. <laughs> you never Trumpers. No, you can th you can think You're it's you can think it's funny, but he had he went. He went way beyond uh, his How job is that description. W way beyond. Because like he went out of the chain of command. So once again, we're talking Which about, but we're not talking about why he went out of the chain of command. We're talking about the process. Just talk about you all of it. You still have to go through the chain of command. Yeah. Any any military people out here that can speak to this? Uh, my my brother Kevin was in the military. Well, he can't speak to anybody us, that's not in your family. Dad, Lily, you were not in the military. His father. Dad, you were not in the military. <laughs> you were in the military like Trump was in the military. Oh, like a whole army passed. A whole army. You guys can't hear that. Yeah, sure. He was Louis in the military. Dad just said, there "There's a lot of things you don't know." Do we really want to give him a mic? <laughs> oh, thank. You. <laughs> Can you recreate that I on, would on a mic? That I would amazing. wish that. I was in the submarine, okay? <laughs> no, here we I go. Was, <laughs> here I we was go. stationed up at Lake Arrowhead. <laughs> now, you notice we weren't attacked at Lake Arrowhead. It was no. just assholes in Hawaii. <laughs> because he was protecting Arrowhead. I stand corrected. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Lou Sabatasso. All right. Great.
protecting Lake Arrowhead. <laughs> you got the music. Give him the music. Not one. It's very true. Not one person got killed at Lake Arrowhead during uh, WW2. <laughs> yeah, that's when yeah. you were in there. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. We learn something new all the time here on the summit, ladies and gentlemen. So getting back to Lieutenant Colonel Vin Vidman, Vidman yes. right? Yeah. Um, Vidman. New news anchor Walker. Yeah. Um, yeah, the D's silent. Vitamin. <laughs> is, is he a never Trumper? I mean, everybody uh, that speaks up becomes a never Trumper. I yeah, mean, that's, that's the only thing. It's like that's who? That's what they got marked with. But I don't understand. Are you a no. never Trumper? Hell no, I'm not a never Trumper. <laughs> I'm not a never Trumper. I'm a I'm a I'm a pro democracy. I have one issue now. I want our democracy preserved. I don't want the fucking Russians or Ukrainians or Brazilians. <laughs> Or Venezuela. I don't want anybody fucking with our democracy. I want to know. I don't care who gets elected. I want to know that every vote counted, and the and, and our and our votes are legitimate. That's it. That's it. And that the people. I'm a never. Care. I'm a never fuck with our democracy. Here. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So then. Oh. Hey, you told me your brother wasn't smart. <laughs> He's really smart. Really smart. What's the difference between a republic and a democracy? Democracy, mm. whoever gets the most votes. Majority rules. Majority rules. Majority rules in a democracy. But in a republic, they give each state, or whatever you want to call it in any other country, a, you know, province or whatever. They give those. They give each one of those states an equal weight <coughs> with the electoral college, so that. If you have New York, California, Chicago, San, you know these major areas of the country, they can't dominate the vote, and then the smaller areas, rural areas of the country, have really no voice within the country. Yeah, you know, so the republic allows each that's evolved, where you know, at a, at a, a reasonable level of where we are, none of them have an electoral college process. And so there's, and the electoral college allows us to have a vanguard that keeps whatever corruption is within our own government and whatever corruption was is, is within our media and everything else that infiltrates the, you know, the, the common good of the marketplace. It sifts through all that and allows things to actually behave. That's where we've always been. And that's the reason why we've had such success as a nation compared to other nations, nations that are a lot older than us, that have been here longer. They've all, they didn't adopt those. You know, he should be practices. sitting up here with you. You know, you know what the average, the average, uh, the average length of a, de of a democracy, a democracy shelf lives are usually 300 years. So... That it goes back to that goes back to so our what we're saying. Are we at a point now? Are we looking to turning point? Yeah, like <coughs> got a hand up over there. Yeah. Oh, here we are. Do is the microphone still around? He's a real. Yeah. He's 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 a real. He's a interesting story. Um, my father, this is his son. You can oh, see that. Oh, gotcha. My father um, has a picture of himself at his high school graduation holding Kurt in his arms. Cap and gown, Kurt, you know, which is, it's a beautiful picture. <laughs> we you just love said it. Louis not your son. So we Louis. yeah, exactly. I'm trying <laughs> to get to the. We have photographic proof of this one. <laughs> All right, we have to go. Um, anybody have anything <laughs> they want to plug? Um, yeah, Aaron? the KTLA Five News at 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Common Ally. Uh, it's an app. It's in the iOS store right now. Um, Nonpartisan, issue based. Um, platform for young people to get involved. So check it out. Just I'll to get people out to vote. I'll be on CBS in a couple of weeks talking about trauma for uh, childhood trauma. I don't know. And but you'll also be back on SNL probably, maybe. Well, I got to go there and do some shit, yeah. Yeah. He was, he, he, re he, he redid, we did, he, Clinton reemerged uh, a couple weeks anything ago. Anything can happen. Epic, epic 
SNL appearance. I th- right. Did anybody right. get to see that? Right. It's nice. amazing. All right, this is all I have going. This shows everything. I This is all I do, so I have nothing else to plug. But thank you so much oh, for I'm coming. Oh, I'm good. I don't need to promote anything. Oh, go really. ahead, Dustin. No. You're the one giving us the, the light for saying. 12 minutes early. Okay. Go Did ahead, Dustin. What do you want to plug? I'll be here next week on the summit. Five o'clock. <laughs> also, five o'clock next Thanksgiving. Saturday. Saturday. It's a show on Thanksgiving. I'm not going to be here next week. I'm going to be here the week after that. All five right. o'clock, the summit. All right. Louis, we don't have to All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs> hey, Thank right. you.